Welcome to the second episode of my FreeCAD basic course. In episode one, I told you that there are several ways of creating proper 3D geometry. The first and most important option, in my opinion, to do professional 3D computer aided design is to learn proper sketching. We start in FreeCAD in the part design environment and want to create a first sketch. Therefore, we start creating a new body element under the new body element, we start a new sketch. We click create a new sketch. And then FreeCAD needs to know on which plane the new sketch has to be placed. It's highly recommended to use one of the already predefined planes like the X, Y, X, Z and Y, Z plane. We start with the X, Y plane. Click on OK. And now we are in the sketcher environment. Under the workbench selector here on the top, you see that we are now in the sketcher. And you will see that the toolbar here on the top of the screen has completely changed. And there are tools to create sketch elements, tools for dimensioning, and tools to give proper constraints. Very important is the left side, the task tab. You will find the solver. You will find the controls. You can change the grid size that you see here on the screen. You can disable the grid if you prefer this. Auto constraints should be activated and avoiding redundant auto constraints should also be activated. If you scroll down, you will find that there is not much here yet. We don't have any constraints yet and we don't have any elements yet. So we should start by placing a sketch element. In the toolbar, we find several sketch objects like points, lines, arcs, circles, and other things. Let's start by creating a circle as we did in the first episode of the basic course. I push middle mouse button and drag the sketch window here a little bit to the bottom left here so that I have more space here to create the sketch. I will start with a simple circle. I click the circle command and then I click somewhere here in the area and drag my mouse like this. Another click. The circle command is still active so I press the right mouse button and it becomes deactivated. Now we have a circle and we have three degrees of freedom. If we scroll down here in the tasks tab, you will find that under elements, now we have a circle and no constraints yet. Constraints are necessary to remove degrees of freedom. So we have three degrees of freedom. The first degree of freedom, you can think of the diameter of the circle. The second degree of freedom, for example, is its position in horizontal. And the third degree of freedom is the circle's position in vertical direction. So let's solve these before drawing another sketch element. We click the constraint diameter, then we click the circle and enter for instance 25 millimeters diameter. Then we have two degrees of freedom left. The next thing we'd like to do is to define the horizontal position of the circle. We select sketch origin point, circle center point, and then we click on horizontal distance. And let's type in 50 millimeters for the horizontal distance. Now let's make another test. We drag the center point of the sketch. You can only change the vertical positioning of the sketch. So that's the last degree of freedom we have to solve. We select the center of the circle. We select the sketch origin point and then we click on vertical distance and enter, for example, 25 millimeters. Now you will see that the sketch changes its color. In my case, it's a nice green color that indicates me that the sketch is fully constrained. And you see it also on the left side, fully constrained sketch solved in zero seconds, close. We have a valid sketch and we can do whatever we like. For instance, we could rotate it around the x-axis. I click on rotate, define basis x-axis and for instance 180 degrees reversed. That should give this nice little tube here. Super simple with one very, very simple sketch. So let's click revolution here, delete on the keyboard and let's show you some more sketching elements. We enter the sketch by double clicking the sketch 
And when we scroll down here, you will find we have one element, that's the circle, and now three constraints as I entered the diameter, horizontal, and vertical distance. So this principle is always the same, no matter how complicated your sketches get. You start drawing something with the sketch elements, and then you have to define them by using the geometric constraints and then the dimensions here. So let's click the circle, delete on the keyboard, and as you will see when you scroll down here, elements is empty and the constraints is empty too because all of the constraints were related to the circle and as the circle is no longer there, all the constraints are gone as well. So the next sketching element I would like to show you is the line. Let's click the line element here, create a line in the sketch, and we have to make two clicks. The first click for the start point of the line and the second click for the end point of the line. Let's click here, right click, closes the command and you will now find that we have four degrees of freedom left. Four degrees means horizontal and vertical position for this point here and horizontal and vertical positioning of this point here. In the first example I showed you how to solve these um, degrees of freedom by using the horizontal and vertical distance dimensions. But there are several other options. For instance, I could define that the start point of the line and the sketch's origin point are coincident. That means that this point and this point collapse. I select both, then I select coincident constraint, and as you will see, only two degrees of freedom left now because this point is always glued to the sketch's origin. So we can manipulate the end point of the sketch, but no longer the starting point of the sketch. If you're no longer satisfied with what you've done, you can select this constraint here in the constraints list, press delete key on the keyboard and it's no longer there. We have four degrees of freedom again and we can drag and drop it again so we have to do it again, select sketch origin point, select starting point of the line and coincidence. Another option to define this line would be to define, for example, the angle between this line here and the horizontal sketch axis. So I select both and click the angle dimensioning. I enter 40 degrees, okay. And now I have one degree of freedom left. I could define vertical or horizontal distance, but I could also just give the length of this line. So I select the line and enter the length. I fix the length to be 120 millimeters. And as you see, I solved my sketch with the four degrees of freedom by adding a coincident constraint that eliminates two degrees of freedom and then an angle and a length dimensioning that eliminate one degree of freedom each. So that's the line. Let's close it. We cannot pad it or rotate it in the part design environment because it's not a completely closed shape like the circle in the first example. So we cannot do very much here. So we have to modify it. Let's go back to the sketch and create a triangle from this little line. We click the line tool again. Let's go down here. And then another line from this point to the sketch's origin point. Right click and let's see what happened to the degrees of freedom. We are under constraint, have two degrees of freedom left. So I think you can guess it, X and Y position of this point is not yet defined. We could define this line to be horizontal, create horizontal geometric constraint. And then it still has the option to slide here on the X axis. Another nice option would be to define that this line and this line here form a 90 degree angle. So they are perpendicular. We select these two lines and click on the perpendicular constraint. And now we have a triangle that's fully constrained. That's wonderful, fully constrained sketch, three lines, eight constraints, close the sketch. And now we have a closed shape. 
and we could, for example, pad this triangle here and we create in a nice prisma shape here. Delete the pad and get back to the sketcher. We select everything, press delete key on the keyboard and I have an empty sketch again. And I'd like to show you how to handle symmetric sketching objects. For example, a rectangle. I select the rectangle tool here in the toolbar, start here and end here, right click. We have four degrees of freedom. You already know it, it's the position that's not yet fixed. It's the length in X direction and in Y direction. So the first thing you should always do is to consider the geometric constraints, something that comes in handy if you work with completely symmetric objects is the symmetry constraint here. We select the upper left point. The second selection is the bottom right point. And as a last selection, we select the sketches origin point. And then we click on symmetric. Now we have a perfectly symmetric rectangle that has only left two degrees of freedom. So let's turn the rectangle into a square where all four sides have the same size. We select one of the vertical edges and one of the horizontal edges. And then we click on this button here, the equality constraint. And you will see that we only have one degree of freedom left now. And then we could, for instance, just select the horizontal edge here, define the horizontal distance, for example, 120 millimeters, okay. And we have a nice square with only one dimension and the rest is completely solved with geometric constraints. That's a very important lesson. Try to start with the geometric constraints. And when you're finished with the geometric constraints, you can go to the dimensions. I started with symmetry, equality, and of course, predefined horizontal and vertical geometric constraints. And then I went to the dimensioning and now I have a fully constrained sketch with 11 constraints and elements for lines. Let's continue the sketch. We want to enter a slot in the sketch. That's this little command here, create a slot in the sketch. We press once to start the slot. We press twice and place the slot. Right click and we end the command. So let's make these two center points symmetric to the red x-axis. Select the two center points, the x-axis, and then also symmetry constraint. Let's define the radius of the slot. Click constraint radius. Click on the arc, make it 10 millimeter. Okay. Right click, drag and drop a little bit. Now we have two degrees of freedom left. We don't have the horizontal position yet and we are not having the length of the slot as you see, right? We could now select this edge, go to vertical dimensioning, make it 80 millimeters, okay. And then define the horizontal positioning for instance, the center point of one of the radius here and the sketch's origin point, horizontal distance, 30 millimeters, and okay. So if we pad this sketch, what do you think will the 3D body look like? Let's find it out, close it, click the isometric view, drag it a little bit over here and pad it up two millimeters high and I hope you guessed right. We have the outline that created this little square. And inside of the square, we have this little slot here. So let's double click the sketch here in the model tree. 
And I'd like to show you one last thing. That's one of the most important things in sketching. That's the polyline tool. Something that I use all the time. Click to enter the first point. Let's start here. You will see that it looks like the line tool so far. I left click and you will see that I'm still in the command. That means that the end point of the first line will be the starting point for the second line. So let's click here. And then very important, try the M key on the keyboard. M will change the behavior. M again. M again, you will see that now we have a circle as the next element. M for the fourth time will create a circle that's perpendicular on the previous line. And M again will do the, pretty much the same. M again will go to the original command. What I use the most is three times M, 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 and go out with a circle for instance, somewhere like here and close the shape, right click. Now let's fix the constraints. As you can see, this line here seems not to be vertical. Let's try it. Yes, it hasn't been fixed to vertical yet. So first thing we need to do is to select this little line here and define it to be vertical. We have four degrees of freedom left. For instance, the position of the center point of the lower arc here. Select this center point, select sketch origin point and define a vertical distance of 20 millimeters. Like that. Then we have three degrees of freedom left. Let's define a radius down here. 25 millimeters, two degrees of freedom left. So we don't have a position in horizontal direction and we're not having the size of the slot here so far. So let's select these two points here and define a vertical distance here, 15 millimeters. And as a last thing, let's glue this line here on the sketches origin point, select line and origin point and select the fix a point onto an object. You will see the sketch is fully constrained with now 31 constraints and 12 sketch objects. So that's already a little bit more complex sketch. Click on close and as you will see the resulting shape has adapted. So let's enter the sketch again. And I'll show you one last thing and that is naming the dimensions. For example, we could double click this radius here and give a name. Let's call it slot R for slot radius. And let's also give a name to this 15 millimeters and we call it shape dist for shape distance. Okay and close. There is one very handy thing. If we have the sketch selected here in the model tab, we can scroll down here to sketch constraints, open the sketch constraints here by clicking this little arrow. And you will find that we have two values here, slot R 10 millimeters and shape dist 15 millimeters. If we change these values here without entering the sketch, Let's see what happens. We set the slot radius to six millimeters. Just enter six, press the return key on the keyboard. The sketch automatically adapts without entering the sketcher. And shape dist, we will enter 30 millimeters, enter. And the distance here changes. When we enter the sketch, you will see that the new values have automatically gone into the sketcher. So that's a very handy way for you to control the sketches dimensioning without the need to enter the sketcher. You could name all of those, give meaningful names to all the dimensions here 
and edit them from outside the sketch. Why not enter 12 millimeters here? Make the slot hole a little bigger, enter 5 millimeters here and make the distance between this edge here and the shape here a little bit smaller. So that was the first episode of sketching. As you have seen in the sketcher, there are a lot more tools in the sketcher and a lot more to learn, but I'd like to keep this video at an appropriate length. I hope you learned something. If you liked it, please like, subscribe and give some comments here. I'm always happy to read your comments, your opinions about my videos. And if you like my channel, and the idea of the Free Cat Academy to give completely free tutorial videos for beginners on Free Cat. Consider donating a little tip for my channel. Thank you very much. See you next time and goodbye, my friends.